Hello, everybody. This is uh, Elijah Ignatieff of the School of Conscious Communication and Planetary Guardians Media. And I'm here with Carl Kalman, who I have interviewed once before. And I feel that Carl has the, the understanding of the underlying sort of uh, physical and more, uh, what is it? The I think you have an understanding as to the underlying waves of creation as you call them that are happening right now that have certain time cycles that are linked to the mind calendar that have an explanation for what is occurring right now in in a way that isn't sort of like the normal understanding and so i i'd like to ask you a series of questions about the timing of right now and how long this is going to last and what exactly we are in and I understand also that we're in a sort of a dip on the negative polarity. Uh, we're at a sort of like a worse kind of moment in time kind of thing. And so could you explain that sort of at the beginning of, of, of sort of like what is this time period we're in and how long is it going to last? And what sort of uh, suggestions would you give to us to, to come up with a better understanding of what's occurring? Oh, okay. That's, that's a lot and good. Thank you for trusting me with that. Yes, I, you know, I do believe that um, the Mayan calendar system, which is really a system of a series of waves, uh, consecutively uh, activated waves, really provides an underlying explanation to the entire uni uh, evolution of the universe the entire history of the universe. And that means not sort of just looking at any kind of a temporary planets, positions or constellations or, or, or something like that, but going back even to the point before the Big Bang, which places us at a time about 15 billion years ago. Uh, this is amazing in terms of a time perspective. Uh, you don't really find it with any kind of uh, rational connection to events in any other system of the world. Um, of course, you know, some would say the Vedic system of, of timekeeping would place it uh, e even longer. Yes, but the point with, or the difficulty with that is that you can't really connect it to the events as we know it today based on the database of, of modern science. So um, what is at the heart of this system then is that it looks at the evolution of consciousness and looks at that as primary relate in, in relation to the, uh, the events that happen on a material level, on, on the more sort of Newtonian physical solid level. Um, whether we're looking at biological evolution or social evolution or, 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 or so forth. In, in this system, it is the evolution of consciousness that is primary. And that evolutionary path is what determines what happens on a more physical um, level. And it's, it's uh, you know, since it's new to most people, it is a little bit complex maybe, but if you consider the amount of phenomena that it explains, then I would say it's, it's a very, very simple uh, system that is based on uh, nine waves, nine levels of, of consciousness. And uh, you, you can look upon these as quantum waves because you know, for, to get from one level to another, you need to make a, a, a quantum leap. You will have to change the frequency uh, according to which uh, consciousness evolves. And uh, um, so it's nine such levels. And um, today uh, we are in the situation after uh, the year 2011, since 10 years back, basically, that all these nine waves have been uh, activated, uh, meaning that in, in principle, they are accessible for us. That doesn't mean that we have access to them or uh, and some people have to some degree uh, accessed all the, the nine waves, whereas others are, are uh, have not even 
tasted the ninth wave or 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 the higher waves. And it's it's not something that we sort of are forced to uh, uh, develop resonance with these waves of consciousness. It's rather something that is given to us as a possibility by the cosmos, and to to find the means of of developing resonance with these things it sometimes takes a, it takes a commitment and also takes a, a a willingness to to um, to cultivate a particular resonance and and go in the direction that that particular resonance is is telling us can't hear you you're muted um. I, I put the map here behind that sort of explains the waves, I think, in, in looking at here's the nine waves put upon a physical structure, right? And don't we sort of act like as transmitters, sort of like it, like here is, is the last one. And so people that are born after this date, would they become better transmitters for that particular wave in their DNA? I would say so. I don't know if it has anything to do with the DNA, but you know, I think we, we what the 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 kind of uh, uh, pattern of waves that we are born into will uh, um, facilitate for us to develop resonance with a particular wave. So uh, I would think that those have actually that have actually been born into the highest wave. Uh, that was activated 10 years ago, they will find it more natural to go into that state of consciousness that uh, that implies. So, so here we have, let's say, the national cycle, the planetary, the galactic, and what's that last one? U universal. The universal. Yeah. So each one of these waves is occurring all the time. And it acts as a sort of a vib vib vibrational frequency that we either tune into or, or we're not. Some of us may only tune into two of these, but some of us are tuning to, to all four of them. And, so, and is it sort of like part of our spiritual practice to sort of tune into the last one to access sort of higher states of consciousness? Is that how it works? Yeah, I, I would say so. Um, we can't jump from the first le bottom level, so to speak, to the to the ninth in in one step. Uh, Humanity as as a species will have to go through this sequence of of levels of consciousness, and uh, uh, they they kind of prepare you for uh, the next level. On the other hand going to the next level it's always a quantum leap and and you you will not get to the next level just by doing more of the same what we have always done in the in in another level so to speak in other words you can become comfortable with a certain level of consciousness and then uh, um, you think that's what it is and and uh, then you may not uh, do the effort in this case to to make the uh, a, a step to another level. So, you 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 have a book, the nine ways of creation, the ninth yes. wave of creation. Now, the nine ways of creation. Yes. What kind of response have you gotten, let's say, from academia or other scholars in regards to that as? A foundational sort of reference point for understanding the evolution of consciousness. Well, overall, it's um, you know in, in academia there is very little uh, interest um, in this uh, kind of work, um, uh, and uh, um, you know, and it may have been partly because these books are uh, uh, are published on, on an uh, by a publisher that really doesn't go in very much to academia. Um, it's I, I would say it's such a big uh, uh, change in worldview that uh, um, it, it, it would have to be an enormous fight <laughs> to, to, to get uh, any kind of response to, with that. Um, I do interact to some extent with a group called uh, the International Association for Big History. 
um, big history then is, is a field, you might say, or, or it's an all encompassing uh, field that looks at the um, uh, of history of human history, uh, not just as what we normally think of as history, but the entire context of history given by biological evolution and the creation of the universe and, and all these kind of things. So I do interact a little bit with that um, uh, group, but um, and uh, which which may be an increasing group. There is uh, some kind of an uh, uh, understanding at this point that. Um, history should not be looked upon just uh, in isolation, uh, that, that there is a context of evolution of, of other aspects of, of, of life that should be considered uh, in, in a bigger picture. Um, but, I, you know, at this point, I cannot say that there's been any, any kind of uh, 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 very strong uh, response from academic circles. Mm. Like, it, to me, this information, like, how did you decode it? Like, there, there must have been a specific moment during your process where you figured this map out. Yeah. How did that come about? Yeah, okay, okay. So that, that's a long, uh, long story, basically. I, uh, the, the, uh, it starts with me uh, going to Mexico in 1979. And uh, just feeling that this must be where my particular purpose in, of life resides, that somehow it is related to uh, the, the Mexican peoples, the indigenous peoples of Mexico and in, in a particular, the, the Maya. And uh, as part of that, I also got familiar with their calendar system. Um, even though, you know, few people would look upon it in, in those days as something that really had any spiritual implications or, or, or so. Um, and then um, in the, in the, say, in the late 80s or so, um, and, and following the, the um, harmonic convergence uh, in, in the United States and, and elsewhere, uh, I started to go down um, spending time in in the temples in in of, of the Maya. You know, I could probably stay a couple of weeks in uh, inside of the pyramid, the temple of inscriptions in in Palenque, and sort of uh, just for the sake of absorbing. Um, the, the, the knowledge that was there. And uh, there is a lot of knowledge even in, in the, how the pyramids are built. In, in climbing these pyramids, you're actually going through calendrical processes uh, and so forth. But there was, you know, given this background, so to speak, really already having immersed myself and strongly sensing that here is what I am here to do. This is what I'm going to study and, and make sense of uh, and, and so forth. Um, it it uh, took um, the work of others to sort of uh, to, to uh, trigger this. Um, and uh, and one, one of the things then really was the the, the, my study of, of a, a book essentially lit, uh, written by Linda Sheely uh, and David Friedel, who are academic um, uh, Mayanists uh, at the University of uh, Texas in Austin. Um, and uh, at that point, it dawned upon me, uh, and, and you may wonder where did it come from, but uh, probably just because all of the influences I've had down in, in Mexico, uh, it dawned upon me that this was not simply a, a, a linear calendar. It was a, a multi-dimensional calendar, multi-level calendar in nine levels. Um, and I think it may be one point that really triggered uh, my uh, thoughts going in that direction was the fact that um, I could see that not only did 
uh, uh, human history begin uh, at the beginning of long, the long count, 5,100 years ago or so, which other people had, uh, uh, had already noticed. But also that, you know, another of these waves started essentially with a, uh, uh, with a time that today has been given to the, the Big Bang the appearance of a material universe, uh, so to speak. And so once that uh, knocked in, that there are nine levels here, it's not just a singular uh, uh, linear uh, phenomenon. I started to, uh, um, started to plot things and see how it, 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 it correlated. And um, I could, uh, this might be a lengthy story, but uh, as part of that, uh, a very important thing was also the fact that I visited Sweden, my native country, um, at this uh, point in time. And it dawned upon me that uh, even Sweden, which is fairly remote then from, from Mexico and, and the land of the Maya, even Swedish history could be very, very well uh, uh, mapped if you assumed that these calendars, these long-term calendars that the Maya had developed, if you assumed that they were actually wave movements where there were days that alternated with with uh, uh, nights, and uh, th that was important because it, it told me that this is not just some kind of an idea that the Maya might have had in that applied to their particular part of the world. It really made it absolutely clear to me that uh, um, this is a global calendar. It, it describes uh, how the evolution of consciousness manifests on a on a global level. And uh, in, of course, then taking into account that even the Big Bang seems to have been part of this calendar system, it, it makes it even broader. It, it makes it into a cosmic calendar that describes the entire evolution, history of the universe. So those were a couple of the main points. Um, uh, but maybe, you know, I, I really got it when, when I, I could see that, you know, uh, certain, uh, the, the, probably the most important uh, uh, um, events in Sweden, his, Swedish history from, from at least a, a larger European context, like the beginning of the Viking Age and so forth, that that, that fit into the Mayan calendar system. The, then uh, these things sort of just, then, then I just, once I had that knowledge, I had some kind of a platform to stand on. Uh, and then I just started to go through pretty much everything in terms of the uh, evolution of, of, of the universe, history, biology, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and found that it fitted, uh, you know, way, way, way more than any kind of accidental things would have given rise to. I mean, if you, if you look at the, the days and nights at the bottom here yeah. of, of the map, which and each one of them corresponds to each level, meaning each level has se seven days, six nights, right? Yeah. So there's a thir 13 part process where at each level you're going into a day and a night, correct? Yes, at, at least up until the, the current time, yes. And so if we're looking at right now, we, we are in one of the, the downs, right? We are in a night like the apex of the night, is that true? Well, it's, it's you know, the, the, each wave develops according to its own rhythm. So uh, you would have to answer that actually exactly wave by wave. Mm. Uh, and and um, yes. So is there one, which, which of these is in, it's, is it a 13 year down and 13 year up or? Um, well, there are uh, the, the, the seventh wave, which is really the one, yeah, you can show it if you, if you like on that pyramid. The, the, the seventh wave there is, uh, has a period that is 20 years up and 20 years down. 
Okay. For actually 19.7 day uh, years, but that that's leave that aside maybe. Okay. Um, and in that case, for that particular wave, which is the seventh wave, uh, which really has a lot to do of, of uh, the system of governance and, uh, and such factors. Uh, that particular wave, you might say, has we've turned uh, midnight uh, recently, and, and it's on its way up. Um, but you know, added to that is the fact that the sixth wave is. Uh, uh, which uh, may be more uh, dealing with the civilizations, the larger civilizations, so to speak, that has turned into a into a, a, a dip uh, that will be lasting for almost four hundred years, and uh, they all, you know, they they all uh, contribute to a, a complex interference pattern. That, that each one of us is, is, is res resonating with. So it's, it's, um, it, that's, um, that complexity, uh, you know, I, I must admit that, but. Uh, um, so you, you, get, you got nine waves, yeah. and each of them has a different amplitude and frequency in time. Yes. And each of the waves are stacked within each other and they each have gotten activated at different time periods. Yes. And 2012, what did that represent in terms of the overall structure? Yeah, overall, it was sort of a completion of, of all of these uh, uh, waves. And uh, since then, uh, it, it turned... Uh, at least temporarily, all, all of the wa waves turned into nights. And oh. uh, the, the situation is not quite like that anymore. But yes, the, there is, a, you know, the, the, um, the, the sixth wave, the, the big civilizational wave, uh, which in its last day of, of 400 years had created this world dominated by the West. That has now turned in, into a, to a night. And so we see uh, the reversal of, of many of the things that were created during that time period. So this, this is sort of showing the beginning of the end for the sort of Western domination of yes. the world. Yes. And in the wave currently that we're in dipping, because like right now, it just seems like there's this massive control mechanism that's coming into place or wanting to come into place. Yeah, yeah. And by this standard, this is kind of like, of course it's happening right now because this is just what happens when, when things dip into the night, so to speak. Yeah. Maybe. Well, uh, uh, you know, a lot of... Um, um, to say that it's a control mechanism, I'm not sure. Um, it, it, it may, I would, I would put it differently. Um, you know, I would say that uh, the, the control of the West from the West is going down. And uh, as a result of that, mm -hmm. there are uh, a, a certain group of people that want to basically stay in the old paradigm of this control. And uh, uh, whereas there is also the possibility of, of uh, 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 people choosing differently, sort of not wanting one part of the world to dominate the rest of the world or, or even to, to question the whole phenomenon of, of dominance, uh, because it, it is as complicated as that, that the sixth wave is also what the wave that uh, brought dominance into the world, to the dominance by, not only dominance by um, certain uh, empires, uh, as we're talking about now, but also the dominance of, of one, you know, group of people over others, one race over others, one gender over others, and so forth. So, um, which, which, leads to the point that it's not as easy as to say that, um, oh, we're in a dark age, that's bad. It's, it's not that easy. Uh, and it's not really true either. Mm. Uh, there are potentially good aspects of it. But what, one thing I think is that 
to some extent, people will lose discernment. I think that is what, what happens when uh, uh, um, dark ages begin. And sometimes they will desperately cling to the old uh, uh, paradigms or, or uh, in a way that wasn't the case before. People might have actually been a little bit more open-minded, uh, you know, if you go back more than, than 10 years. Now you find a, a tremendous amount of people, uh, of, regardless of their uh, political viewpoints and so forth, that seems to be completely stuck and, and completely impossible to move from their positions uh, based on rational arguments and, and so forth. Um, I, I see. I think I see this in a, in a lot of cases. Because one thing I'm noticing is is like I've been working on let's say new paradigm technology, and up until a certain point, it just seemed it didn't matter what I said or did. People just couldn't kind of grasp what I was yeah. putting forward. Yeah. And now, as sort of civilization is radically changing, it just seems people are open to something new. Yeah. But other people, as you say, aren't open at all. Right. And so it, it just seems like maybe the, the doorway that they talked about at 20 at 2012 was yeah. this kind of separation, right? The distinction between people that are living in a certain way versus people that are living in another wave. And it's something that isn't talked about or really shown in any method other than what you discovered. And so it's it's there's a lot of confusion but it's very distinct as to what's happening. I totally agree with you. I think it's a, it's a perfect description of, of how people are re relating to this shift, this big shift actually that took place 10 years ago. And so the, the let's say they talk about the shift in consciousness. So there's a lot of people, let's say, they call them indigos or crystals that actually may have been the also what they call the imaginal cells, right? The, 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 the people that were accessing these waves earlier than other people. And yeah. so they, they were actually accessing a, a sort of level of consciousness that was so far removed, as you say, it takes a quantum jump to get there from the normal thinking of where people are at. And so people that are sort of born early and sort of sent as, let's say, pioneers in a sense, like depending on your, your worldview, if you believe in reincarnation or if you believe that we're actually incarnating at certain times in this history, that that explains why, let's say, the indigos are crystal because we're so different from the others. Yeah. Yes. And I, and I don't think that's really brought up, let's say, in psychological or, or the normal Western interpretation of reality, right? No, it's not, because the, the viewpoint in, in those uh, sciences, uh, in, in psychology and so forth, is that uh, our, our worldviews and, and our, how we relate to each other and so forth is something that is a product of, of our brains in, uh, in isolation from mm. uh, the rest of the cosmos. Whereas in, the, in this kind of a perspective of the Mayan calendar and the macrocosmic quantum theory are, we download, we download fundamental aspects of the structure uh, of, of how we structure reality. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, meaning that uh, it, it's, it's a perspective, a cosmic perspective that is completely missing in, in modern uh, psychology or brain research. Mm. And, so, and so we can kind of see that the difference, the bridge between these waves um, can be sort of seen from certain pioneers or people that have accessed it ahead of time. They're sort of showing the way, but it can't kind of be comprehended. But to the people that are coming or being born now, they just may know it automatically, right? Like it's, it's sort of like something like that. It's yeah. built in. So, so it does have a um it shows the progression of consciousness it shows that it is happening independent of whether we want it or not or are trying to make it happen it is actually happening yeah but it's yeah. in in such a different time scale than we can see in our normal lifetime that it unless we have some sort of framework that that you're putting forward here we can't understand it right right 
uh, you know, and a pretty obvious example of this is uh, when it comes to the world of digitization, uh, uh, which is really a product of the eighth wave. If you look at the, uh, then, you know, it's so obvious to see that there are kids, they may be two years old or five years old or something like that, that would just automatically know how to maneuver a, an iPad or something like that. Whereas it would take me a number of years probably to get a, a, a handle on it. But they've been born into that, uh, um, to an more immediate access to that state of consciousness that actually allows for uh, di the digitization of of, uh, uh, of reality. Well, and what does that have to say with something like transhumanism? I don't know if you're familiar with that, but just yeah. the the potential evolution of humans and machines sort of merging together, but in some sort of like drone-like state where these again where, where, I, where i brought in control mechanism was it just seems that with this 5g surveillance state that's coming in that when you merge that with nanotechnology and you merge that with a lot of the other technologies coming out that our evolution has perhaps several potential timelines of some that are more orwellian in nature and some that may be quite different but we don't even know them yet because we don't know quite how all these waves are coming together in reality. And I'm just wondering what you think about that. Yeah, that's well said, I would say. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure there are strong forces today that are sort of trying to drive evolution in that direction. And, you know, one of the factors that, that has been necessary for that is the eighth wave, which is really the one that, uh, it, 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 it prepared or, or made it, it created that kind of restructuring of the human brain that allowed everything to be, become digital. And so I'm sure there are strong forces trying to make this come about. And it's not something I'm in favor of, you know, I, it's not something I, I personally would look forward to. Um, I, I would su suggest rather than uh, this is sort of more like staying on the level of the eighth wave, rather than taking the quantum leap to the ninth wave. And uh, it, 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 the, the ninth wave, as I would see, is, is much more uh, creating unity bet between uh, human beings and uh, creating our, our unity very much so also with, with nature. And uh, uh, um, whereas the, 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 this underlying wave, the, the H wave that created this digitalization and this uh, drive towards transhumanism, uh, that, that will tend, tend to keep us separate and uh, um, you know, very much in, in, in some kind of an artificial world, even increasingly artificial world, uh, as you say. So, you know, I would say that, mm, mm, this is not really the transhumanism. I, I don't think that is really what what whoever designs this whole plan for the cosmos wa was thinking of. Uh, I don't think it is the, the best uh, outcome of, of the evolution of, of the universe, but it's a possibility. Uh, and, and certainly if, if people don't take that final jump, that quantum jump to the highest level, uh, then, then it, it, it may very well be uh, something that comes to dominate. I don't know. So do you believe that the Mayan culture, which left this mathematics and left this in stone buildings, so it would last, do you believe they came here from the stars and then perhaps left? Um, and, they, and that was their reason for being to, the, to this planet? Uh, no, I, I, I don't believe that. Uh, um, you know, I, I do think you might, you can talk about a connection that we have to the cosmos and to the stars, so to speak. And, uh, um, the, the, and the, the, how our minds and our psyches are structured, uh, I believe are to some extent or, or to a large extent actually uh, uh, given to us by cosmic changes. Uh, the you might say the 
the quantum fields that exist on a cosmic and a galactic level is really what we download. So in this sense, we are very much subject to whatever goes on in, in the cosmos. Um, but having said that, uh, uh, and, and so, you know, I think we're all cosmic beings and, and I'm sure there are cosmic beings uh, in many parts of the galaxy and, uh, and in, the, in the cosmos as well. Uh, but I do not think that, um, for instance, the Maya were, were, were coming from another planet. Uh, I think they were, you know, like ourselves. And uh, of course their descendants are still living down there in that area, uh, area in, 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 in Mexico. And uh, um, I think they were just human beings, but uh, had another kind of a focus than most people would have today. And, uh, uh, an, another openness to these cosmic influences that shapes our reality than, uh, than that we would have today. So how, how do you find, like who comes to you to learn what you've got? Like, like you, yeah. teach, you teach yeah. courses? Yeah. And uh, what, what's contained within the courses? Like what do you teach? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's it's sort of I, I have courses that are um, mostly they've been five to ten uh, sessions, and it, it basically covers the entire evolution of the universe from this uh, particular uh, viewpoint. And um, there's much much to uh, to talk about the, you know there's all the detailed aspects of of human history and uh, uh, it, it, often it's it's a matter of seeing you know that uh, there are two sides to the coin so to speak uh, for instance uh, not to just say that okay we're entering a dark age so that's bad but to see that well that holds uh, certainly holds particular risks but it also holds particular uh, um, possibilities and uh, to, to recognize that these waves have been going on in the past as well and might do so also into the future uh, Many things like that needs to be nuanced um, uh, when it comes to the evolution of, of the universe. Uh, but I've, I've seen absolutely nothing that would tend to uh, debunk this model. I mean, it, it has such a uh, all encompassing uh, nature and, and uh, explains so many of, of the facts of, uh, uh, of uh, how we evolved to this point that um, to me at least it's still a stunning thing that that this can be uh, encapsulated in in such a relatively uh, a short uh, uh, description but you know, overall you know i go over the history of the maya and uh, uh, i talk about uh, quantum theory because you know you can't really understand uh, their calendar system if you if you are uh, based on the traditional Newtonian physics. You have to see that this is not uh, a, a calendar based on astronomical phenomena. It is a, a calendar system based on the evolution of consciousness. And that's something entirely different. And uh, a couple of, you know, the, then I will go into the rise of civilization why did civilizations emerge on this uh, planet to begin with? Which is a very interesting question uh, that, that historians have been uh, wondering about for a long time. You know, how, how could it be that, uh, uh, you know, maybe over a period of seven generations or something like that, Egypt went from the Stone Age to building these huge pyramids and, and, and creating a, the, maybe the first real civilization of, of our planet. Um, that's, you know, the, I, I would say there are no other, uh, um, the, or I would say the best explanation is that it was a quantum leap. People took a quantum leap and ch life changed as that quantum leap became accessible. 
And then I go into, you know, our, our present situation and, and where we are to go from here or what, where we may go from here, what the, the options may be and, and, and so forth. So it, 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 there's a lot to cover. Um, I, I think it has an enormous um, explanatory uh, uh, potential. So have you been teaching, let's say, anyone under the age of 20? Um, I have, but it's been a while. I, I don't think anyone under 20 has been part of uh, courses the past one or two years, no. I was just wondering how the younger people would sort of uh, accept yeah. the information or what they what they thought of it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. And I don't really know. Uh, we, we'll see if I, I will be able to reach out to such a group. And I'm wondering about the Mayans themselves. Like, are you in contact with any of the Mayan elders? Do they sort of endorse your work or do they criticize it? Uh, I know Jose Arguez, you know, had quite a, you know, a difference in opinion about their own calendar. And I'm just wondering yeah. about your interaction with them. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, it wasn't just a matter of opinion that separated Arguez from the Mayan elders. Uh, it was the fact that he completely changed their sacred calendar and did so um, in order to have his own, uh, in order to have the calendar put a significant place for his own birthday and the birthday of, of his wife. And so it was really kind of a fraudulent uh, approach and, uh, and very much ego-based uh, approach. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say just bad things about him because he was also a pioneer in a sense, but he certainly did something to that to, to the Mayan elders seemed very offensive and, and should have been so. Uh, um, and uh, um, so it's no wonder that they still to this day are, are quite upset with it, that, that people are using his calendar and calling it the Mayan calendar when in fact it's a calendar that they never have uh, used. Um, when it comes to myself, you know, I'm not saying that they endorse it, but I've always had these respectful uh, relationships to the Mayan elders. Uh, I did the first um, interview uh, with Don Alejandro Oshla, uh, who is the head of their council of, of elders. Uh, the first interview that became accessible in, in, the, uh, in the Western world. Um, and uh, for instance, another uh, significant uh, Mayan elder, Hunbat's men, he actually wrote to me uh, on the day he dead, died, which is now, I think, two or three uh, years ago, which was quite moving, wanting to uh, increase our connections uh, and so forth. And uh, uh, he didn't, I don't think, you know, he, he yet knew that he was going to die, but nonetheless, that, that was what happened then. And so um, I, I still have some um, uh, connection uh, uh, with, with the Mayan elders, but, um, um, you know, I would just say that this is a, a relationship that I have them is one of mutual respect. Uh, and, and I certainly don't change their sacred calendar um, as Aguayas had done. Um, uh, but at the same time, you know, I cannot say that they endorse uh, what I'm saying, and uh, <coughs> I, I wouldn't think many of them would have the kind of background, uh, scientific background that, that I do that would allow them to do so. Um, the, their approach is a little bit more magical and, and mystical than, than, than mine uh, as well. Do they have, like you have a specific languaging around these levels and, and you, and like the mathematics, let's say would be the same, but they would have different language. How does this correspond to perhaps what they would say? Do you know what that is? Yeah, well, it, I, there is a big difference here that, you know, basically I'm, I'm trying to be a, a spokesman for the ancient Maya. Uh, including the whole calendar system, so very, very long-term waves uh, and so forth. Uh, but that 
system has gone out of use since uh, um, something like 500 or a thousand years ago. Uh, meaning that today the, the ancient, sorry, the, the contemporary Maya uh, do not really use it. Instead, they, they are using this um, sacred calendar system as they call it, which is a, 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 a daily uh, calendar, uh, a, a calendar of uh, uh, where every particular day uh, um, has a particular uh, energy and, and so forth. And today it is, for instance, 13 Ben in that calendar system, 13 staff. Uh, you can try, you can, uh, or, or 13 read uh, would also be another ex um, translation of, of this particular day that we are having this uh, interview. Um, and uh, to them, you know, that's very important. That, that's basically what, what their knowledge uh, circulates around. And it's quite extensive, meaning that if somebody is born on this particular day, 13 Ben, that, then that would mean a, a lot of things to them. And, uh, uh, and uh, they would use it for divination and, and so forth. But they would hardly talk about um, the, the long-term processes of, uh, that the calendar uh, describes. Uh, so, so, and this is, I would say, unlike the ancient Maya, uh, who, who actually were very much um, into studying how th their own uh, lives were connected to the long-term processes of, of, uh, uh, of evolution. I'm not sure if last time I showed you this map <coughs> that uh, I call the time translator. Um, yeah. As you can see, I mean, this is using Jose Arguez's uh, dream spell. Yeah. Um, but I was just wondering about your thinking in terms of like here on the, the outside, the purple, that's the zodiac. Yeah. But it's, it's basically your lifetime <laughs> with <laughs> the relationship of the planets can go on there. The blue is the 13 moon cycle. So it's one year. Mm -hmm. The lunar, the aquamarine is one lunar cycle. And then the green is a daily cycle. So you've got your lifetime, your year your lunar cycle and your day cycle. And then you have the, the 20 count mm -hmm. where I place the people. And the, the idea is that I, I, I have an intuition, it may, it may not be true, that if you had a team of people, each that was one of these, that you'd create like a superhero team of 20 people that are sort of activating their higher DNA. And then if you yeah. go to the, the pink is an hour, the orange is a minute. The red is a is the present moment, and then at the center is timelessness. And that's where you can actually have levels of consciousness if you want to bring in a Buddhist or Hindu perspective. So what it is is the center point are levels of consciousness, and then cycles of time, and then having a place where people sit in a sort of a circle of 20. And I was thinking like 20 has a very significant number, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, like there's 20 amino acids. Yeah. There's, there's 20 critical systems in James Miller's theory of, of living systems theory. And it's like the tetrahedron has four points. And then if you have a tetrahedron at each one of those points, you have four plus 16 and you go back to the tetrahedron again. Yeah. So, so 20 is actually a whole number of one. If you look at it from the point of view of a tetrahedron, which is the base unit of the universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just wondering for some feedback from you on, on that. On this. Well, you know, I can't, uh, what I can't, I mean, I, I, there are other people that have basically tried to do uh, similar kind of things. And uh, uh, the, the, it, it means, I think, um, trying to connect uh, systems of uh, um, discrimination of, of different energies, so to speak, that, that are, have different bases. Um, you know, for instance, I, I see there the, 
zodiacal thing and uh, um, uh, which is one you know one way where you look at uh, uh, you may say segments of time that that uh, have common uh, energies whereas with a with a Mayan system each particular day then is is rather than uh, what separates them and um, I, I um, well, no, I, I, you know, if it works, it, it, it works. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I would guess I would, you know, if, if I would to give to some kind of an opinion, uh, I would have to uh, look at each of these systems and, and try to understand what underlies them uh, and what their reality basis is. And, uh, uh, certainly, as I've already implied, the 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 uh, the dream spell thing I, I think has no other basis than uh, the ego of of Jose Arguelles, um, and then again, maybe you know, maybe there's a truth to that too, but I I, I can't really buy into it. Have you? So did, I'm, did I, I'm not. So it's. I, I what I want to say is, is basically there there are other people that have have tried to do these kind of things and uh, um, um, yeah uh, but I I think it would be more reliant on the intuition of of anybody who who uses it than than on anything else. Well, one thing I found was like what's shared I guess with the mind is is they have multiple calendars in circles right and using that as like an infographic using that as a methodology to organize information mm -hmm. it's so different from organizing in squares or the xyz axis that right. we're, that we're used to like our, our culture does not use circles to organize information pretty much yeah that could be true yeah and so what i have found by using circles because it's it's sort of like when you use a circle like let's say i add this and i'm looking at let's say a team mm -hmm. the 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 circle has you know shapes have a you know massive impact on how we organize information and just the type of thinking that occurs and i'm just wondering if maybe the ninth wave might be like unity consciousness is more circle consciousness yeah, you would say so, um, but most importantly, it's not. Uh, it it doesn't have a duality. It doesn't have an inherent duality. Uh, um, but yes, I think it is circular, um, and uh, uh, certain other uh, uh, waves are are dominated by linear separations of, of yin and yang, basically, and light and darkness. And uh, uh, so, yes, you know, I, I, I would probably agree with you that the ninth wave has the, 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 the circular aspect of, of that, of the geometry, of its geometry uh, would be more important. Like this is another sort of, you know, 12 twelves. Yeah, and, right. And looking again that, you know, within a square structure, you just not, you would not create this. Mm -hmm. And that, so the organization of right. information, yeah, when it's dependent upon a, a certain form, actually creates a certain type of consciousness. Yeah. And so it's like King Arthur with the Knights of the Round Table, they're sitting in a circle and there's, there's something about an equality or a unity yeah. around Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, um, that circular gatherings are, are have a different uh, structure uh, or structure will also structure the the mind and the outcome of, of of the proceedings differently and one thing i found like let's say this if you take a look at each one of these circles and they're color coded that this represents the lifetime this represents a year this represents a lunar this represents a day this re represents a season. This is an hour, a minute, present moment, and timelessness. That each one of those is a perspective of time. And what you're doing in a much longer version 
is that these cycles of time have a certain perspective, have a certain frequency. And that if, if your mind is tuned into that, that that's what you're going to have as your reference point for interpreting reality. But true sort of, let's say, multidimensional thinking is being able to move between the waves. Mm -hmm. And in a certain context, it might be great to be in a unity type thinking, but mm -hmm. in another context, let's say with another group of people that think differently, you might shift that yeah. to match their thinking and languaging so that you're not just because what I find is, is I've had so much, um, whatever I'm putting forward is so different yeah. <laughs> than the norm that it, it, it's like, I'm talking gobbledygook. Yeah. And I just, and I just yeah. want to review sometimes that depending upon your crowd and depending upon who really is listening that, you know, you're, um, There's going to be certain audiences that are sort of, I guess, a lot more open to what you're talking about, and yeah. a lot of audiences, I guess, that aren't. I'm just yeah. wondering, I'm wondering, do you do any lectures in universities? Um, not at this point. We will see how uh, in, in the future, but not not at this point. Because I, I just wonder because you, you're again, you you know, when you put forward such different information, there's a lot of resistance to it. Yeah, there is. And, you know, you, you think you're, you're being very, you know, academic and you think you're being very intelligent, you're putting forth something and it just does not register. And I guess that has been a hard thing, at least from my, my point of view of, of how, how do you sort of gauge your audience in a sense of, yeah, like where, where's, where are the best audiences? Where are the places that are going to be most receptive to what you have? And I'm just wondering how you... How you sort of identify that or what you've come across well um it has changed i i think the um uh, i for, for the most part i i simply have not uh, tried to to be accepted in the academic world i mean i've been uh, teaching about this in, in of course the the thinking has evolved o over time but basically it's almost 30 years that i've been uh, not quite, but almost 30 years that I've been uh, teaching about this. And uh, uh, things now the, have, have matured, the, the theory have matured enormously over that point, uh, point in time. But, um, and, and possibly I, I could get some kind of a hearing from the academic world. But overall, I, that's not something I've tried. Um, the um, and uh, for some periods of time, so there's been an enormous interest in uh, what you, you know you might say general spiritual new age uh, oriented uh, interested people uh, and so forth. Um, at, at this point, um, uh, I, I think uh, that group is is uh, also quite um, is, is doesn't really have that interest. Um, so we, we'll see uh, what what will happen. Um, I, I I may intensify my efforts to go into the academic uh, world, but overall, you know, it's it sets up blocks uh, at a very early point, uh, and uh, um, uh, th th this is simply something that. Uh, is is such so encompassing that it would be uh, um, uh, an alternative to the entire educational system for mm. you know in the entire every science would be um, um, uh, affected by it and mm. um, and, and uh, so it, it, it certainly is not something that would happen easily um you know tr the truth is is one thing but uh, uh individual interest of all kinds of people is is another and and that's really what what needs to be dealt with and in this case you know it is a theory that you know i i could admit it, it really doesn't uh um match the nobody has anything to gain from it except for 
the the survival of the planet and and the survival of humanity and the fulfilling what what it was meant to do but it's not like you can get rich on it or or benefit yourself from it in in particular ways so that 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 is very that's that's part of you know the the situation when it comes to these theories well i, I think we're coming to the end and i i'd like to uh have a lot of gratitude towards you for talking today and also towards your work in terms, of, I think what you've done is groundbreaking and, and worthy of high merit within our whole species. And at, at some point, probably long after your death, you will, you will be commended um, <laughs> yes. as, as, you, as you will. I was wondering if there's any sort of words of hope that you can uh, leave us with in terms of what the mind calendar points to and what it points to for our future. Uh, what would you say in your parting words to people? Yeah, well, thank you. I enjoyed talking to you and, and I really think you understand the basics of, of what I'm saying here. Uh, and um, uh, well, um, for one thing, uh, I, I can say that the Maya did not expect the world to come to an end. And uh, uh, we know that because um, they, they actually have some dates that are like uh, what in our chronology would be AD 4000 uh, and so forth. So, so they did expect things to just go on. Um, then uh, I, I would say that sometimes now we are in an unusually difficult uh, energetic system uh, where uh, many uh, waves at the same time may be uh, um, in, in, in those dark ages. And uh, one aspect of, of the dark ages is that, you know, you, you no longer have that feeling of a forward movement. You don't really have that feeling of, of going somewhere, so to speak. Um, but uh, to some extent, this will be alleviated over the past, uh, over the coming uh, ten years. I, I would say, and uh, there is a, a potential. I think that you know by then, uh, I would say uh, 2031, uh, when when the day begins in the seventh uh, wave, and uh, um, people born into the ninth uh, wave will be coming of age, uh, then there is a possibility of, of creating a world uh, more uh, based on equality and, and unity than is, is, is currently the case. And I think that's really what we should uh, look to. Uh, of course, that also implies saying that, you know, this won't come overnight. It's not like I'm saying tomorrow there will be a paradise or something like that. This is something that will take a lot of cultivation of, of willingness to actually look uh, to, to make the quantum leap to the, the ninth wave and, and the kind of unity consciousness that that carries. Well, that's, that's good news. Good news to hear. Great to see you again. Thank and you. Uh, Likewise. I look forward to seeing you in the future at some point where we can tap back in and perhaps uh, look at some of the courses you're going to be coming out with. Yeah. And uh, for anyone who's watched, thank you for listening. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Elia.